What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride with Sound Tech once again. And while I'm not the best Call of Duty player or Warzone player out there, definitely pretty average with a 1.34 KD. I do pride myself on actually getting my settings correct to help me get the best experience out of the game. And today I want to go over that with you because it's being requested in live stream chat at twitch.tv slash blind run where I'm live every day, 6 a.m to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. So today I'm just gonna show you essentially what my settings are in Call of Duty Warzone. This is for PC and we'll go over it right now. Okie doke. So first of all, let's go into mouse settings, right? So I'm running the glorious model O negative. So the smallest one they have as options. And as you can see here, we have pretty much a 400 DPI, which I always switch to when I'm playing 800 DPI is what I run when I'm just working and such. So there you go. Now the polling rate is at a thousand Hertz and that is the mouse settings. So if you wanna copy those over, feel free to go ahead and do that. Moving into the game, if we close this out and head on over to options, you'll see my mouse sensitivity is at 7.5. So, you know, everybody's gonna be a little different. Try it out. The thing you're gonna need is I have a glorious PC gaming uh, mat here and it is the XXL one. It is very large. And the idea behind it is to move the forearm for your quick movements or your large movements. And then you can dial in your aiming uh, with your wrist essentially. And that's gonna help improve your gameplay. You are going to have to go test it out for yourself as well as just practice with it. Cause it will be a mind shift if you were playing on a high sensitivity and just using wrist over and over, it's going to be a shift in your brain. But what it's going to help you do is it's going to help you get more headshots for sure. End of story. You're going to be able to dial in that aim a lot better. If you're having trouble with it, go ahead and pick up an aim trainer like Kovacs from Steam. I'll leave a link to the store page for that down in the description. Now the rest of this is pretty standard. We have everything set to one, nothing changing there. That's all default. Now we did change our aim down sights and we changed it to relative. Now the reason we did that wasn't really anything in particular. What it did was essentially we still left you know, everything at 1.0 um, with the transition timing at gradual. And then we were able to dial in that monitor distance coefficient. And that's going to be dependent on your setup as well. We have invert mouse look disabled, mouse acceleration turned off, mouse filtering turned off and mouse smoothing turned off. I recommend leaving all of those off. Otherwise you're going to have weird outside forces changing your aim. So keep that in mind. Now for movement, I really didn't change anything. Everything's pretty much stock standard as you would expect. I think that the big thing that you should learn to use is your slide cancel and that's going to be CC and then space. Um, you can add space. I like to add it to my fifth button here and there on the mouse so I can just CC and then tap the button on the mouse to go ahead and get that slide cancel in. That's going to be a technique that we can go over in a later video. Uh, let me know if you're interested in it in the comment section below. But I have pretty much have left all of the keybinds completely standard. I liked them when they came out of the box. I've been playing Call of Duty on PC for quite some time now, all the way back to Black Ops 1, I believe it was. So um, it's been a long time. I've been using the same ones for a long time as well. So the other option that I would recommend turning off, but being aware that you're turning off is auto deploy. It was enabled right now, but the parachute auto deploy, if you disable it, you're going to be able to land a lot closer to the ground. So go ahead and take a look at that. So now we're going to move on to the fun part, the nerdy part, which I like to talk about, and that's going to be graphics. You guys know that I do a tech channel here. So let's talk about graphics. The problem with Call of Duty is it will reset your graphics if the game crashes, which you can see it has here. So this is perfect. We're going to be able to go through it. Display mode, full screen. There is definitely a performance hit in full screen borderless or full screen extended windowed or even windowed. So make sure you're running it in full screen. Your display monitor is going to be whatever your main display out is. 
and then your display ad adapter is going to be your graphics card, your primary graphics card. Nothing too crazy there. Screen refresh rate. Refresh rate's big in this game. I mean, let's be honest, the the lower your response time is and the higher your higher FPS you have, the better chance you're going to have at uh, beating somebody else, especially if you're playing crossplay and you're playing against console, which is, you know, locked down to that 60 frames per second or less. And if you are playing on PC, you should take advantage of that and crank your refresh rate up as high as possible. And that's really what all these graphics settings are going to be, is going to be getting everything dialed in to make sure that you have the most frames in the smoothest experience. Your render resolution, 100, and it'll do this a lot. You're just going to have to, you know, make sure that you check all your settings again. And then display resolution is 1920 by 1080. I don't recommend going higher than this. Even if you have a big rig, you're probably still not gonna be locked at 240 frames a second. If you have a big rig and you're not running a monitor that supports 240 frames per second, I would highly recommend getting that. Now, outside of that, we have the rest of our settings so our custom frame limit uh is just it, we don't have one it should be unlimited so uh if you're having issues there you may want to check into getting so i'm talking about screen tear uh, where the screen kind of tears in between if you're having that issue and you don't have a free sync or g-sync monitor consider limiting your frames to the refresh rate of your panel so texture resolution i have set to high now, the reason I have it set to high is because the more clarity you get, the easier it is to get shots on. Everything else is pretty much low, as low as it can be. Texture, filter, and optic, particle details, bullet impact spray, tessellation, shadow map resolution, cache spot shadows. This one I have experimented between turning on and off, and I think you do get less crashes with, the, with caching the spot shadows and the sun shadows but you do get less frames as well. So that's the only other thing that I recommend possibly turning on. I haven't tested it to an extent to prove it, but anecdotally, it feels like I crash less when, when that's enabled. Particle lighting, low. Ambient occlusion, disabled. Screen, spe screen space reflections, disabled. Anti-aliasing, I turn this on. Um, I have a 25 inch 240 Hertz panel from Alienware. I'll link it down in the description below in case you wanna go check it out. Now you don't want the filmic on, but you do want the T times two or T two X on SMAA. Um, and that's going to basically clean up the jagged edges. I feel like it makes it easier to spot enemies. Um, but if it doesn't bother you turning it off and getting the extra frames is definitely, and there's definitely an argument there. Depth of field disabled. Um, I think that even if you're talking about in particular a performance advantage or an advantage not just in performance but also in what you're able to see with your eyes I think that depth of field can what it will do is blur the sides and really focus on where you're focusing on at the center of your screen which sounds okay but that's not the way you should be aiming the way you should always be aiming is thinking about looking at the target with your eyes and then bringing the gun and the reticle to the target and you're going to find a lot more or success that way so having this this effect on is going to hurt you when you're trying to practice that especially so i definitely would just disable that no matter what filmic strength off it's already off anyways um, because we don't have it on with the anti-aliasing world motion blur disabled why would you want a blurry screen when you're looking around i don't know why you would it'd be a bad idea um, it goes back to talking about depth of field as well weapon motion blur same thing off i turn it off it's not gonna it, it can this one can be just distracting and i think it sucks but i guess if you prefer having the motion blur on the weapon it shouldn't affect you um as far as your performance in game film grain zero so that's the graphic settings that's how on the rx 5700 xt we stay between 190 and 220 frames a second with one percent mins at about 156 frames a second. So we're staying up there. Everything's really, really good and really smooth. And I highly uh, recommend copying these over because I think you'll get more frames and you'll have a better time in the war zone. Now, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and apply those now. So audio mix, I have set to boost. I've been playing with this. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm not really sure what I think about it. There's a lot of different options. I think boost, I feel like, at least anecdotally, like I said before, I can't prove it, but I feel like I can hear footsteps better when I can actually hear footsteps because sometimes I swear like I can tell they don't have dead silence on. I didn't even ever hear them run up on me. That being said, it's on boost. So there you go. 
Uh, controller settings, we're not going to go over because I'm not a controller pleb. And then I believe it's, yeah. So in general, we need to talk about field of view. My field of view is cranked all the way up to 120. Here's the thing that will kind of change that, right? So field of view, there's an argument for like 100 to 105 and a little bit lower um, just because otherwise things look too far away. You can kind of help that out with your ADS field of view. Um, so here's the difference, right? Independent is aiming down sight zooms the field of view to its usual value, which is a little confusing. Um, and it can be confusing in game too, because then it feels like a little bit more jarring, at least to me. Um, I like everything to kind of be the same. So affected is aiming down sight zooms to a value closer to the field of view setting and only applies a low magnification levels, less than 3.25X, including iron sights. And what I would recommend doing is I would recommend testing both of these out to see what you prefer. Like I said, I don't like it being adjusted too crazy. So I like to do affected, which is basically gonna make sure that it only applies to low magnif magnification levels, less than 3.25s, including iron sights. So it's gonna affect pretty much everything that you use in Warzone, except for sniper rifles, at least the way I play Warzone. You're gonna get a little bit more of a zoom out of it, or at least it feels like it does to me. So what it's gonna do, if you take a look at the difference between independent and affected in the example, is that when you go down into ADS and affected, um, you're still going to get that larger uh, field of view and so you're not going to be hindering yourself by not being able to see someone in the peripherals and not be able to get your second target acquisition so this is a lot more helpful if you're talking about taking on a 2v1 or something in those lines because what happens a lot in fps is, is you get tunnel vision and if you get tunnel vision the problem is is you're going to down that one guy you're going to be tempted basically because you're already zoomed in on him you haven't seen anything else coming at you right you're going to be tempted to go ahead and clean up that kill you should not be cleaning up kills too often right I, I think that you should always if you are using independent right and you're getting that extra zoom in you should always at least bring yourself out of ads and check before you clean up that kill even if they have a self revive you're going to have enough time to at least check what you don't want to be doing is getting that tunnel vision and i feel like independent influences you to be getting a little bit more tunnel vision as well as just in a basic firefight you're going to be at a tactical disadvantage you're not going to have as much uh, awareness going on so i definitely this is a big one that could be controversial i know people have argued over affected and independent there is an argument for affected um from or there is an argument for independent from the perspective of you get that a little bit of extra um, it feels like you're closer to the target. Um, so there is that argument, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I personally run affected. Um, I like to have more awareness. I do have colorblind on, um, and then everything else here is stock except for the mini map shape. Ah, that is a big one. Good point. So the square, what I would recommend the round mini map, I believe the calculation that I read was you lose 20% of the mini map when you go to round and it's default is round. So move it over to square, get that extra 20% and that's also gonna help with awareness. So there you go. Alrighty, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video of my settings in Call of Duty Warzone. I'm always open for tips and tricks and helpful hints and uh, of course anything for debate on any of my settings. I think uh, as graphically, I think we're pretty much, I'm going to say, if you're playing competitively, I'm pretty solid on on what I think you should be running there. As far as the rest of the settings, especially the affected versus the ADS modes, right? Affected. Um, that one I could maybe have my mind changed on a little bit, but I'd have to hear a good argument. So leave that argument down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful. And if you want to come watch me live, come check me out at twitch.tv slash blindrun. Until later, I'll see you next Tuesday.